All right then, gang. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we can preload component data to make our app really fast and smooth. Now, this means that before our component is even rendered, Sapper is going to fetch any data that we need for that component so that it's readily available when we do render it. Now, that can be done both in the browser and on the server using the same block of code. Now, to do this, we're going to be using a special type of script in the component which we need to preload data for. Now, in our case, that is going to be inside the jobs index component because ultimately we'll be loading our job data in here and then injecting those jobs into the component template. Now, this special script that we need to add is in addition to this normal component script right here. So let's place that at the top. Another script tag. This time, though, it has a context attribute and that is equal to module. So this script right here always runs before this normal component script. This script is not considered part of the component itself. All right. And it's guaranteed always to run before this one right here. So it's a good place to fetch data. Now I'm going to demo that by adding a console log at the top to say module. And then at the bottom, I'm going to say components, right? So we should always see this first and this second. Now, if I save this over here, we can see module first, then components. And in the browser, we can see module first, then components. So this script at the top always runs first. So like I said, it's a good place to preload data. And we can do that in Sapper by exporting a function inside this script called preload. So let me get rid of this console log here and also this console log here. We don't need those anymore. And I'm going to export a function and it's also going to be an asynchronous function because we will be using asynchronous code to fetch data inside this function and it must be called preload. All right. Now this function takes in a couple of parameters. So the first one is the page. The second one is the session. Now the page parameter has information about the page, things like the path or the route parameters, etc. And the session object contains session data, which can be generated on the server. Now we're going to be using this page object later on when we start to use route parameters. But for now, let's just try fetching data inside here so we can then use it inside this component. So how do we do this? Well, we can use the fetch method to do that. But I said before that we can't use the fetch method on the server. And sometimes this can run on the server if this is the initial page request. So how do we get around this? Well, inside the preload function, Sapper gives us a special context whereby we can use the fetch method, but it has to be done on the this keyword. So I can say this dot fetch and that will work inside this preload function on the server. So right here, I could try and fetch some data, but we need data to fetch and I'm going to place that inside the static folder. So new file and I'm going to call this data.json. So just some JSON data and I'm going to paste this in right here. So just two objects, each one has a to do property, right? So we're going to save that and we're going to try and fetch that now from this preload function. So all I need to do is say, I want you to fetch data.json. All right. Now I want to store the results of this in a variable and this is asynchronous so we can use await in front of it. So what I'll do is say const result is equal to await and then we're awaiting this thing right here. So this resolves and we get a value from it before we store it in this constant. Now, when we use this fetch API, we need to pass the response into a JavaScript object, which we can use inside our code. So let's do that first. I'll say const to do's, which will be the JavaScript object of the to do's JSON equals await. And we'll say response dot JSON. So we take the response and we turn that into a JavaScript object. We pass the JSON using this method. It's asynchronous. Hence, we use the await keyword. And then finally, all I'm going to do is return an object whereby the to do's is a property inside that and the value is also to do. So this is the same as saying to do's is equal to to do's because they're the same name. We can reduce it to this and it does the same thing. So now this value is essentially being exported from this script and we can accept it as a prop inside this component script right here. So I could say export let oops, I've done that completely wrong export let and then the name is to do's so it must match whatever this is called and this is how we accept props inside components remember we place export in front of it 
So now we have access to those to-dos and we could do something like cycle through them and list them in the template. But all I want to do is log them to the console to see if this works. So console.log to-dos. All right, so if I save this now and go over here, I'm going to refresh on jobs and it says jobs was created without expected prop to-dos. So let me just make sure everything is correct over here. And that all looks correct. Let me just try this again over here. Oh, okay, now it works. We can see all of the to-dos right here. Okay, and over here we can see the to-dos as well. So now we have those ready inside this component and we could do something with them like output them inside the template. So remember, this script up here and this script for that matter, that could run on either the server or the browser. Now, if this jobs page is the first request to the website, then it's gonna run on the server first and it's gonna get all of the data on the server. But if this was not the initial request to the site, then this is gonna run in the browser. So for example, if the initial request was the homepage and then we go to jobs, all of this is then gonna run on the browser, but it would still run before this script down here but this will only ever run once. So if the initial request was two jobs and it runs on the server, when it then gets to the browser, it's not gonna rerun in the browser to fetch that data. It's only ever gonna run once to grab this data. That way we're not fetching the data twice needlessly. So ideally what we wanna do here is fetch some data on the server by using a server route or endpoint, much like calling an API endpoint, instead of just grabbing this JSON data right here. So to do that, we'll need to understand server routes, which we're going to see in the next lesson. But just really quickly, I want to show you one more thing. So remember in the nav over here, if we go to the nav component down here, before I deleted something on one of these anchor tags that said something like rel equals prefetch. Now that was for the anchor tag to go to a component which uses this preload function. So that is the jobs component or the index component inside jobs in our case. So what I could do is come to that URL down here, this anchor tag, and I could add on here, rel is equal to prefetch, right? Now, what this does is say to Sapper, look, this component, when we click on this link, is essentially gonna be using data. And what I want you to do is try and prefetch that data using this thing right here, this preload function. So now, if we don't go to jobs first, for example, if we go to home and we refresh, if we now hover over that jobs link, because it has this rel equals prefetch, then Sapper is gonna look ahead of time into this component right here, this one, and it's gonna prefetch the data using this preload function so that by the time we actually click on jobs and go to that component, it's already tried to get that data for us. So it's even quicker and we have that data ready for the components. Now I'm gonna demo this by opening up the network tab over here and clearing everything. Now watch what happens when I hover over jobs. You see, it made this network request for data.json so that when I click on jobs, it's there ready for me. So it did it ahead of time, it thought ahead because it thinks I'm gonna click on that and it will need the data. So it's a nice fast user experience that way. If I hover over again, it doesn't need to remake that request because it's already got it and it's ready. But now when I click on it, it doesn't need to then go and fetch it again. We have it automatically ready and we should see that inside the console over here.